Hey, what's up guys? Benny here and welcome to another Call of Duty Warzone Season 4 video. Now, one of my favorite things to do each season is take a look at all of the guns in the game and rank the top 10 from worst to best. Then with these 10 guns, I'll also give you the best class setup for you to be able to go and use in your loadout so you know that whatever you decide to use, you've got the best setups possible. And this season, my list has changed a fair bit with the discovery of new weapon setups as well as the introduction of the Fennec and CR-56 AMAX. So before we get into the gun that's in 10th place, 80.7% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to the channel. So subscribe and I promise I promise you, you'll get better at Warzone and make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss my YouTube live streams. So in 10th place, we've got to have a sniper. And personally, I'd have laughed if you told me I'd have been saying this a little while ago, but the best sniper to use in the game is the AX-50. Now, what I will say is that the AX-50 is much harder to use, so should only be used by the best snipers who are super consistent with landing their shots and are able to gauge the bullet drop-off. Because unlike the HDR, which you can just point and shoot effectively to be able to land headshots, the AX-50 doesn't have as high a bullet velocity. But that's where the skill gap comes in. And because the AX-50 has a much higher rate of fire, you have the ability to deal a much larger amount of damage and be able to take down squads far quicker with the AX-50 compared to the HDR. You just need to learn how to use it, which can take a bit of time, but is worth the payoff. Though if you're just starting off with using snipers, start off with the HDR and then build up to the AX-50. So on the AX-50 itself, the best class setup will include the Molifix Suppressor, the 32 inch factory barrel, the TAC laser, then you'll want the Syngard Arms Assassin stock before finally having the FMJ perk. So you can finish players off through objects, which you'll notice will actually happen quite a lot, but that's the setup you should be using with the AX-50. Then in ninth place, I've got to put my own personal bias aside and making it into the top 10 is the RAM Assault Rifle. Now, some of the important things to know about the RAM is that statistically, it should be the best assault rifle in the game. It has the exact same damage profile as the Grau and the M4A1, dealing 42 damage for a headshot and 28 to the body and limbs, paired with a fire rate of 860 rounds per minute. So it can drop people incredibly quickly and has the highest DPS out of all the assault rifles. Now, what makes the RAM more difficult to use compared to the M4 and the Growl is that it does have a lot more recoil that you have to manage, which makes it a little bit harder to take down enemies at a distance. And because you'll usually swap to an SMG at close range, which is where the RAM smashes every other assault rifle, it just falls short of those top four or five guns in the game. Though, don't get me wrong, you can very easily do absolute bits using the RAM and it can comfortably hold its own when you're trying to get high kill games. But just remember, learn how to manage that recoil with it kicking up and sharply to the left, which is also strange to get used to as most other assault rifles in the game kick slightly to the right. The best class setup for the RAM includes the Molifix Suppressor, the FSS Ranger Barrel for that increased damage range, bullet velocity and recoil control. Then I use the Commando Foregrip and 50 round mag. Now recently, I've also started using the VLK 3x scope on a lot of assault rifles as it just makes assault rifles so easy to use. But if you want to use the iron sight, you can swap this out for stippled grip tape. But yeah, the Ram 7 has the highest DPS among the assault rifles, but can be very hard to use, which is why its ninth in this Warzone Season 4 weapons list. Next, we have a gun that has fallen in my estimations in Season 4, but still makes it into the top 10, and that's the M13 Assault Rifle. The strength of the M13 is that it's got an incredibly high rate of fire with also having minimal recoil. And if you're landing those headshots, has an insane time to kill with it dealing 36 damage per bullet to the head, but only 24 to the body and limbs. That's of course made up by its 900 rounds per minute fire rate, which allows you to drop fully plated enemies in no time at all. And with the right build, the M13 is a really easy weapon to use. One thing to 
note with the M13 is you need to be super comfortable with making those small adjustments to land those headshots to make it a top tier weapon. It'll still do the job, but because of that low damage profile, which means you need 11 bullets to kill an enemy to the chest, you need to make sure you make those small adjustments to get those headshots to get those kills. But on the M13 itself, you want to be using the monolithic suppressor, the Tempest Marksman barrel, the TAC laser, the Commando foregrip, and then the 60 round mag. You'll notice on most assault rifles, if I'm running solos, duos, or trios, I'll use the 50 round mag, but when I play quads, I'll use the 60. But with the M13, I will always use the 60 round mag. Next, in seventh place, we have our first SMG in the list, and that's the MP7. Now, the MP7 isn't used as much as it was when Warzone was first released, because really, it's a more versatile SMG when you compare it to things like the MP5 or P90. It's solid at close range and up to medium range, but it doesn't dominate at any of those distances. It's the jack of all trades and the master of none. It's also really easy to use with a clean iron sight and low recoil. It's actually probably the best floor loot gun in season four for early game, if I'm being completely honest. It'll deal 40 damage for a bullet to the head at close range and 25 to the body with an incredible fire rate only beaten by the Fennec of 950 rounds per minute. And as I mentioned, the MP7 is the best all-round SMG there is, but when you come up against guns that are geared for those situations, you're going to end up losing. Like, an assault rifle is going to beat you at medium range, and the MP5, for example, will destroy you up close. But if you're just getting started with Warzone and want a weapon that's easy to control, the MP7 has to be the SMG to use. On the MP7 itself, you'll want to have the monolithic suppressor, the FSS recon barrel, followed by the Merc 4 grip, the 60 round mag, and then finally, the stippled grip tape rear grip, which is a great all-round MP7 build for all situations that you'll come across in Warzone. Then in sixth place, we have the brand new CR-56 AMAX or the Galil. This is actually a really fun assault rifle to use and also packs a punch because like the AK-47, the CR-56 uses 7.62 ammo, which means it's got one of the highest damage profiles in the game among the assault rifles, not including the Odin. It deals 56 damage per bullet to the head, 42 to the chest, and then 35 damage to the limbs, which, as you can imagine, if you're landing your shots, enemies are going to drop pretty quickly. The gun, of course, because of that damage per bullet, has some trade-offs. First of all, it has a bit more recoil than the other 5.56 assault rifles in the game, and also a slower rate of fire. But with the build I'm about to show you, you, the recoil is super easy to manage and you're going to have a great time using it. Another downside with the CR-56 is that it also has a very slow reload speed of 2.82 seconds, with all the other assault rifles reloading in under 2 seconds. It's quite a big difference. But on the CR-56, you want to be using the monolithic suppressor, the XRK Zodiac barrel, the range of foregrip for more recoil control, which is one change I've recently made, and the 45 round mag before finally finishing off with that VLK 3x scope, because as I've mentioned a few times, it makes managing the recoil so much easier because of how the scope uses the game's aim assist. Then in fifth place, we have a gun that I honestly cannot believe I haven't used more until season four, and it's a breath of fresh air, and I feel can match and even beat the growl in a lot of areas, and that is the Kilo 141. Firstly, I've got to start off by saying this Kilo has a faster time to kill than the growl and is almost as much of a laser. With the class I use, I'll give you in just a second. It's got the same damage profile of dealing 42 damage to the head and 28 to the body and limbs with a fire rate of 750 rounds per minute, which is really good. The reload time of just 1.34 seconds is also really quick for an assault rifle. And importantly, it's got a fast base aim down sight time of 267 milliseconds. But this gun is an absolute beast and in the past was never ranked that highly for me. And being completely honest, you could argue could be higher up in this list. So please do let me know in the comments where you think the Kilo should really end up. 
But on the Kilo itself, you want to be using the Molifix Suppressor, the Syngard Arms 19.8 Prowler Barrel, the Commando Foregrip, and the 50 round mag. Then you've got a choice of two scopes. You've got the VLK 3x Optic that we've talked about a few times, and then the Canted Hybrid, which gives you a 3.25 times magnification, keeping it within the low zoom weapon category for maximum aim assist on the size of a target. Honestly, if you want to try a new gun to mix your gameplay up in Warzone Season 4, Four, definitely give this a go. It's an absolute beast and a lot of fun to use. Now it's time for the big hitters in Call of Duty Warzone Season 4, which you could even call the new Big Four. But in fourth place, dropping out of the top three for the first time is the M4A1. I feel like the M4 has been one of those guns at the top for so, so long, but it's finally begun to fall out of favor as it's just not as consistent as a couple of the other assault rifles. And consistency is becoming more and more important as the skill curve in Warzone is starting to get higher and higher as people are starting to master the game. But the M4A1 is still one of the top guns and one you still see people dropping 50 kill individual games with, it has the 556 damage profile, dealing 42 damage to the head and 28 to the body. But what helps the most with the M4A1 is it also, like the RAM, has a pretty fast rate of fire compared to other assault rifles firing 800 rounds per minute, which is one of the reasons a lot of players used to prefer using it over the growl, as it does have a faster time to kill. Just the iron sights of the M4 and that extra bit of recoil let it down at longer distances. Now, the setup I've seen used most often in high kill games is the Molifix Suppressor, the Corvus Custom Barrel, the Commando Foregrip, the 60 round mag, and then no stock. Now, the reason for this is that if you're going for high kill games, you're trying to get in people's faces as much as you can. And the Corvus gives you that extra mobility to help you come out on top in more gunfights at those medium range distances. But for an assault rifle, you can't go wrong with the M4A1. And now it's time for the top three weapons in Call of Duty Warzone Season 4, in my opinion. And to be perfectly honest, this is almost tied with the M4. But in third place, we have the brand new Fennec SMG or the Vector, as it really should be called. Honestly, this season, it's been a breath of fresh air to be using something that's a little bit different and also absolutely destroys up close. Yes, there are some cons with the Vector, but it's also got some massive plus points that helps it be such an effective weapon at its desired distance. Now, the Fennec actually has the same damage profile as the MP7, dealing 40 damage to the head and 25 to the body, but it has a best-in-class fire rate of 1,100 rounds per minute. 1,100! The important thing to do well with the Fennec is you've got to be up close to the enemy team. You've got to be using it in buildings or when you're right in someone's face as the damage drop off is insane and the bullet velocity is pretty low because of that stupidly high rate of fire. So it's a very situational weapon, but pair it with an assault rifle and amped, it's never much of an issue. Though the default mag size of 25 rounds makes it hard to take multiple enemies down at a time, especially as it's got a slow reload speed of 2.95 seconds. But with this setup, that doesn't really matter and you'll get the kills super quickly. So on the Fennec, you want the ZLR 18 inch deadfall barrel, the no stock attachment for maximum movement speed. So you move at the same speed as other SMGs. Then you want the Merc foregrip for hip firing up close, the 40 round drum mag. This is a must pick with a Fennec and then sleight of hand to speed up that reload speed. I personally just love using this gun as it's so much fun to use. So give it a go. Okay, it's time for the top two guns, which also combine into the best meta loadout in Warzone, which you're gonna want to use if you're in tournaments or trying to beat your individual kill record. In second place, we have the MP5 SMG. This gun just doesn't have any flaws in what it's designed to do, and that's to destroy people up close, with it also having the second highest damage profiles among the SMGs and the fastest time to kill. It deals 49 damage for a headshot 
shot and then 34 to the chest and limbs. And when you combine that with the 800 rounds per minute fire rate and that the recoil and iron sight is super clean, there's just nothing wrong with this gun other than the fact that you can't beam people across the map with it. It's also got a really fast base aim down sight speed of 200 milliseconds. So whether you're firing from the hip or snapping into your ADS, it's honestly perfect. My build has actually changed recently as well, as there's been a lot of research put into what is the best overall MP5 build. And what you'll want to do is start using the monolithic integral suppressor, which gives you that sound suppression, but importantly, increased bullet velocity. Then you want the FTAC collapsible stock, followed by the Merc 4 grip, 45 round mag, and then stippled grip tape. I stopped using the sleight of hand perk with the MP5 as it only increased the reload speed by around 0.2 seconds, which isn't worth losing out on that faster aim down sight and sprint to fire speed that you get from that rear grip attachment. But as I said, if you want the best SMG in the game, make sure you're using the MP5. Well, 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 guess what's managed to take the number one spot once again for the best guns of season four. It is, of course, the Grau Assault Rifle. The Grau is just ridiculous. It's flawless and is also so easy to use compared to other weapons in the game, especially with the build I'm going to show you. It realistically needs some sort of nerf in the future, but until that happens, make sure to take full advantage of it. There's almost no recoil, so you can just beam up opponents at a distance with it dealing 42 damage for a headshot and 28 to the body and limbs. It's got a fairly solid rate of fire of 730 rounds per minute and also the fastest aim down sight time of the assault rifles with a base ADS of 234 milliseconds. Perfect for the fast paced gameplay of Warzone. Now, normally I'd tell you both the pros and cons of a weapon, but the Growl doesn't really have any cons as it can beat snipers in a long distance fight and can even on occasion beat an SMG up close. It's also really easy to use for any skill level. The only downside really is it can be a bit of a pain to unlock, but with the new Warzone Rumble mode, it's easier to unlock than it was before. But on the Growl itself, you have two real options. Firstly, you can use the Molifix Suppressor, the Archangel Barrel, the TAC Laser, the Commando Foregrip, and the 50 round mag. Or you can swap the TAC Laser for an optic like the VLK three times or that can hybrid that we put on the kilo. But for pure performance, definitely use the growl and pair it with the MP5 and you'll have a great time. But there we have it. Those are the 10 best guns in season four, ranked from worst to best. Let me know if you agree in the comments and turn those notifications on so you don't miss my live streams on YouTube, which I'm starting to do a lot more of. And click one of the videos on screen for more Warzone season four content and I'll see you there.